You're listening to Pirkei Avot with Rabbi David Katz. Rabbi Katz? Jason Specht, how are you? I'm here again. You I'm good. I can't get radio, I keep trying, you keep coming back. <laughs> it was supposed to be three times you say, you say no. <laughs> <laughs> Where we, we had a little bit of a hiatus. Wait, last, do we... I don't know if we talked. Did we have a class since I went to Hillel? We, I don't think we did. No, no. Right after that, you went to Hillel. So I went to Hillel. It was pretty easy to find. And then I actually made a, a double, I mean, a double run. I went back the next day because I went on a Thursday. And then I took the kids to uh, to lunch after Shabbos uh, food we, we bought. And um, a really amazing, amazing, like Gan Aiden, amazing uh, hummus bar opened up next to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. <laughs> and I've been praying my heart out for, I don't want necessarily to, you know, a restaurant when I'm out. I can't always go home because of parking issues with the house. So I, I want something because <clears throat> really simple hummus, pita, matbucha, you know, real Israeli food. And, and ironically, you can't get uh, is really food in Israel anymore? Just like you know, just, just like you can't get a hot dog and cracker jacks for cheap at a baseball game, you know you can't you can't you probably can't get a Philly yeah. cheesesteak in Philadelphia. I mean it's 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 disgusting. And I'm like you know I, everybody all the people on Facebook post pictures of their Israeli food. I'm saying well, that, that's great. I'd like to have some too one day. I mean I can't it's find anywhere. Insane. Yeah, and I say to my friends, you know, my friend owns a pizza shop, and I said Mati. Why can't I get Israeli food in Sfat? He says, David Kachel is at Sfat. That's how Sfat is. <laughs> so they finally... Dude, what was that restaurant? What was that restaurant right down the street from your house we went to that was like one of the most amazing places I've ever been? Which one? Oh, the, 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 the Moshe's Grill? Well, the, 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 I don't know what it was called. It was, the, it was like a secret little place that opens at night. Oh, me and you. We, we, we went by ourselves. Yeah. That's a restaurant yeah. already. I'm, I'm saying I want like you know like McDonald's but healthy, okay. you know, like quick. Street food. Yeah, street food. And so they <laughs> open this place. It is Gan Eden. It's it's new. It's clean. It's it's right next to every Shimon. It's fresh made pita bread with fresh hummus, fresh lemonade. I mean, you name it, man. It's, only, it's only got like four things on the menu, but you know, it's really salad, pita, hummus, and shakshuka. But man, they do it right. I'm telling you, they I can eat pita and hummus every day if it's these guys. And they take credit cards. It's cheap. The kids can eat there. I mean, it's it, you don't get any better than that. Now, I never had a reason to drive to Mayrone. I just never. It's always it, there's nothing there, and it's just it's not, all the rabbis. Well, it's not it's not worth going to Mayrone. It's a whole headache to get up there just for you know five minutes of every shimon. But now mm-hmm. if you're going to eat, it's like it's like a whole it's, now there's reason to go. And um, so I took the kids and I had a picture. Each kid I had stand on one foot and I asked them to tell me the whole Torah. And so Reuven said the whole Torah is uh, to heal him. And Zohari said it's to pray to God. I think they're right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so uh, it's working out. But Shammai is going to be about a three-hour hike, they said, from Hillel. So we're not going to Shammai. He's no good anyways. He argues on Hillel. We don't like that. It's... <laughs> shouldn't be arguing no i would love to go but uh i'm not why it's like you know jason we're close but we're not that close it's like <laughs> I, shamai i love you man but you're not worth a three-hour hike i'm sorry uh some of the graves are just too hard to get to uh just too hard and so uh hillel's pretty easy but shamai is buried i'd like to go god willing one day all right well, but... Sh- shamai chased the gear away with the with a ruler yeah, so you know he can have his uh, hillside in the middle of the of the valley there. God bless him, though. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So here we go. Uh, we're on number fourteen, and just before we're going to get to Shemai, and I really do want to see what Shemai is going to say, because you know the uh, the Zugim, each but every 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 group here is a pair, and we've seen the greatness of Hillel. I want to now see, you know, we don't really know who Shemai was. Nobody ever talks about Shemai, but here we're going to have a chance next week. Our next class. So, um, one more to go with Hillel, and then we get to the, the contrast of Beis Shammai. So, I'll, I'll guess I'll go ahead and open it up in the Hebrew. And remember, we're uh, we are 
we understood. Let me just get some background. Hillel. What he? What do we? What do we say? Ah, the whole Torah. Right. Right. The usage of font. Jesus, in fact, it was like font, mm. as he brought in the mm. Aramaic. Right. And I'll let you introduce the whole font thing in a minute. Um, but that's what he did. He found creative avenues to explain, explain and, and express the whole Torah. Right. He used some Aramaic and things like that. Um, Yal Yasef, right, to go back and do it again. I mean, he, he basically entered a computer program uh, where everybody else was, was typing in a language. He understood that you can make a more powerful language. Um, basically, you know what? It's almost like the after the advent of, uh, of Greek wisdom, right? Because, they, you know, the, every exile gives its wisdom to Israel, and everyone was using language-based wisdom. And I think Hillel, we can see he his language became Greek characters, meaning he found a way to pack in uh, exponential wisdom by using different types of characters, i.e. Uh, inter interlacing Hebrew and Aramaic. And that's really what computer language is. You know, it's it's a different type of character, and that's the that's the beauty and beauty especially is Gavan, it's Greece, and they they have a beauty in their characters. And we see that Hillel definitely did that. And Hillel's name means to praise. So it, it fits in pretty good. Well, let's see if we can continue that thread then with uh, <coughs> with Hillel here. But just one second, though. We said that Shmaid of Tullian, wait, they uh, – just back up one second. How did it go? The, the whole Torah is you judge yourself and you come out okay. And of Tali, do, do you remember how we how we did this? How did it go? About you know the, the students of Aaron. How did that go? How was our progression of building the story? You're in based in. You're you graduated. You're vindicated. Um, how did it go? You're staying. You're, oh, you're you're living and not dying. That's what it is. You're living and not dying. That was Shmai of Talian. and then the students of Aaron was uh, the synopsis of that. And Hillel then... How, what, what was the final take on last week's Hillel? How'd that go? You remember? Like the final the final encapsulation of the wisdom. What did we say? 13? Yeah. The last mission, it seems like... A year ago to me. Yeah, I know, I know, me too. Um, I know we said it's the whole tour on one foot. I think we said he encapsulated the whole thing. I mean, it's. Oh man, Shema of our Shmaze. If you seek a name, you'll fade away. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, okay, we. It's it's that. I mean, it's uh, now the story is built. But I I I think we had we had we had we understand the shots the me the simple meaning of thirteen. So let's just build off that. Ready? Hu haya Omer, he would say, Im en ani li mi li. Bokisha ani la atsmi mi ma ani. Ve im lo akshav emesai. He would say, if, and I want to really focus, because this is hard, these are, it's very simple to make it vulgar, but let's not do that. Im en ani li. Im en. One second. In in okay, if there is not, he's using a function. I I I figure it's like a function. It's it's, it's this is called words of understanding. Im if ain anili. If there's no such creature in the world that is anili, that I am for me, or that's not really what Lee means. One second. Or I am me. Wait, an, wait, if, was, ani... this, this is one of the most profound. Yeah, this is this is most quite quoted mission of all time, probably. It's the most quoted, but but I say it's quoted incorrectly, and it's so much more profound that's than it. being remember, for that's yourself. A, that's it. It's very simple he, to make it vulgar. Yeah. He's saying, "Am I if I'm not myself?" Then what am I? Right. Yeah, but hold on. I want, I want to first get it in the Hebrew. One second. Before we open it up into the, um, what do you call it? Uh, drush. I say drush in English. 
Extrapola- extrapolation. Uh, let me just try. To, I, I just want to. I want to grab the Hebrew. I've always wanted to do this. One second. Im ein anili. What is anili? Ani. Ah, if there's not the concept of ani in my being, okay. If I'm not me. No, well, no, that's already vulgar. I'm, I'm keeping okay. it in the real, real skinny here, Hebrew. Okay. If there's yeah. no such vessel of consciousness in in what is me called Ani. You understand? If I don't understand okay. Aleph Nun Yud, right? Just like uh, Gare is not in the vernacular of the Christian, right? They don't know about Gare. If they did, they would not be Christian, correct? I mean, they're trying to discover it, but they don't, the word is missing. Also, with Jews, they don't they don't have a they don't have the the word ger. That word is missing. Follow? Okay. There's no concept of ger. It's convert. They think. So so, so, does, so in the vulgar is he saying if I don't know what no no me wait, wait, is. no no there's no 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 I'm saying there's there's no vulgar here. Don't go vulgar at all. He he has no. He's saying if the person has no concept of self, ani. Mm-hmm. If I say uh, if Jason says to Rabbi Katz, um, "Who's here?" and you want me to say ani, I'm here, right? Ani, okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead. Go ahead and ask who's here. Go ahead. Who's here? Nobody. I didn't answer you. Why didn't I answer you? Because you have no concept. I, I don't know what I don't know. I don't. I, I I kind of understood your question, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what I don't know what ani that is. Happens. You you want me to that say I, I, you want me to say ani, but I don't, I don't know that word. Okay. So now me li. So if there's none of that, then who is me? You see 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 how it goes. If you don't know yeah. ani, then then what you have is me li. That uh, who is then who is to me? Who am or, I? Or, 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 yeah, well, who, yeah. What, you see what I'm saying? It, it's 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 the absolute ex- existentialism. If you don't even know anything of self, and you can imagine how much how projected that can go, the more you do explore yourself, right? Me li. Mm-hmm. Then who is to me? So if you say so, uh, uh, go ahead, Jason, and address me. Go ahead, address me to, uh, as you would address me. Go ahead and, uh, on any issue. Go ahead. Rabbi David Katz, are you there? I get nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. See? Mm-hmm. Who, because because if I don't have a conscious self, who is to me? Uh, maybe I'm not Rabbi David. Are you are you are you referring to me, Jason? Is it are you referring yes. to? Well, well, how do you know that that's me? I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. You see what I'm saying? I I, I can't. Get, <coughs> you're, you're trying to address me, and I can't. I can't. I can't just say, yeah, I'm Rabbi David Cat. I don't know. By the way, the Vilna Gon says that Gehenim is where you have no name. Uh. You see. Now think about what he said in the, in the thing above. He who seeks a name loses his name. Isn't that great? Wow. <laughs> see, see, if you seek a name, you so lose a name. So that ain't saying, wait a minute, if you have no name, what does that do? That's not a good thing if you have no name. Either you have, either have no name because you lost it, or because you weren't seeking a name. So that leaves a bald spot. Now you're saying, what, I have no name? Then, then, then what? That's horrible. Now, ani la'atzmi, and when ani la'atzmi, but if I if I do have a name, go ahead and go ahead and address. Go ahead and ask if anybody's here. Is anybody here? Ani, David Katzpo, I'm here. Okay. Okay. I I I, I, I identified myself. Ma ani. What is what is what is ani? It doesn't say who am I, right? Everybody asks, "Is Jesus real?" I tell them, "Stop saying who was Jesus. 
and try asking the question, what was the Yeshu thing? Right? Don't say, who was he? He was a master Kabbalist. He was the renegade rabbi. And all these <laughs> stupid, they're guessing. I saw a video last night. Somebody put a message, a thing on Facebook about the secret teachings of Jesus. And I, I, I clicked on it. I wanted to see what it said, right? Just because it's all coming up with the messianics and people are asking me to make my Mashiach and Yosef videos. You know what they said? I couldn't believe this. I thought I was going to be like trying to like, bring the Torah wisdom out, right? He said, Jesus knew the secrets of the universe. And I'm like, wow, okay, let's, let's check this out. Just to see what it says. He knew about Kundalini Yoga. I thought, oh, come on, you gotta be joking me. What? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, they're like, he was a secret yogi. I'm like, oh, come, you gotta be kidding me. You know? I mean, so, it, it, this is what happens when you go for who. If you ask, you know, who's Rabbi David Katz? If I ask myself that, who... I can I can make up whatever I want to hear. David, you know who you are? You you are probably, you know, and then just fill in the blank. That's the ego. And so if you say ma'ani, now it's an objective question. You know, wisdom is chokhma, which is the letters koach ma, the power of what? So if you identify I am a I am a person, so then stop, don't ask, who am I? Like you were saying when you didn't know who you were. Now you have to say, what am I? V'im lo akshav. And if not now. Ah, so what, so if, and if not now, meaning you're going to say, Rabbi David Katz is, a, is the greatest rabbi that ever lived. Really? How's that going for you with your, uh, Three followers on Facebook and YouTube. How's that going? You're the most famous of all time, huh? So you can project and dream about yourself, but you're in the future. So the question of ma'ani is now. David Katz, what are you right now? Don't tell me what you, th what you the rabbi means to me. You're not Rabbi David Katz. You're a rabbi to five people, and more importantly, you're a father to two kids that love you and need you. Okay, you're a friend to your your five followers of Rabbi Katz. They're actually your five friends, right? And you make videos, and you don't know who's watching. So, you know, you're a rabbi, um, but more importantly, you're a friend and a father. That's the same thing to say, right? And if not now, when? Okay, so, you but you have dreams, Rabbi Katz. So you're going to be the you know big Rabbi Katz, whatever it is, right? Jason Speck's going to be the world's greatest chiropractor. Okay, but you're not now. Right now, you're a father and a friend. But I'll, I'll throw you a bone. You will be a great chiropractor. World-renowned, let's say, right? When? Mm. When is that? If, like, if, if it's not now, then... Then when? Like, wait, wait, where, 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 where are you projecting? When you're 70? Did you make it, Jason, when you turned 70? Uh, you know, when, when, when was this big thing going to happen to you? So it really brings you into reality. Because you're you're not a world renowned chiropractor. Who who's world renowned in anything? You know what I'm saying? It's it's all subjective. I mean, LeBron James went on record to say he's the greatest in the in the world. Is he? Okay, he's certainly one of the greatest. But is he absolutely the greatest? It's pretty dangerous to say you're the greatest of anything. Pretty dangerous to say that. Everyone in wrestling knows anybody can be beaten on any day. So when you say you're the greatest. That's that's pretty impressive. When when did that happen? Humanity has flaws by definition. So your projection is when you have no more flaws. Therefore, it's a rhetorical question. When when did you achieve that? Basically, when when did you become Jesus? And, and the thing is, Jesus is not real. Why? Because the whole thing of no character flaw is a fake virus program. It's not real. Mankind, by definition, has flaws. Only God is flawless. So when we try to, to to basically erase our flaws, you're erasing your humanity, and that's delusional. Then it goes back to then, you have to admit, what am I? Okay, I'm not the greatest rabbi that ever lived. But I can be the greatest David Katz that ever lived. This is the whole, this is where you get into the, uh, you know, the, the, the proverbial sense, right? I'm trying to be the greatest rabbi David Katz that God ever created. I'm trying to do the best I can do. 
but by definition, I have to acknowledge what is the self. And David Katz says this flaw, that flaw, you know, and then then they say, okay, so since you know that, what are you then? You're, by definition, there's no such thing as the greatest rabbi that ever lived. So now what are you? So now you can get into it. Now you can get in the wisdom to find out you're right. What is, what is David Katz? He's a hard, he's a young, hardworking guy trying to bring true Torah to the nations. Okay, that's fair. And I'm sure you got you you had a lot of bumpy uh, uh pat, a lot of bumpy roads to get to where you are, which means you have flaws. So now you know what are you now? And then it just goes round, 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 round. It's how, so we talked about vindication of self in the base in and how to live and not die in the whole Torah, right? Now what we're getting is how do you really identify yourself? Don't try to prove to others, right? You know, and then it was telling you, you know, don't go after a name, you lose a name. He's telling you here, you want to know who you are, Jason Specht? You want to know the meaning of life? Right here. So you're going to go after your name? He says, don't go after a name. And then he says, whoever does not increase, decreases. And that's what it says, if you go up in yourself, you're going to go down when you analyze and say, what am I? He who, frees, he who refuses to teach deserves death. And if not now, meaning you're a chiropractor. So did you ever think about giving the wisdom of a chiropractor? Now? Mm -hmm. right, don't tell me you're going to be a Torah scholar in 20 years. You're, 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 let's say even you will be a rabbi in 20 years. Well, you're not a rabbi now. So what are you? Gonna, why, why not now? And then, and he who exploits the crown of Torah will fade away. When? Because if, you, if you're exploiting the, the crown of Torah now, what you're really doing is you're saying, but I'll, I'll stop doing that in about a week or a year from now. I'll, I'll be real in a year from now. Let's be real now. That's my give and take a little bit. Go ahead. Hmm. I, I have nothing to add to that. That It's... It's uh, kind of what he's saying, Ukshani uh, Leatsmi. Atsmi is like your essence, right? Like your bones. Etsum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, your essential self. Which means so you're, you're, saying, you, you, you acknowledge you have, a, you have an essence. You, you, right? Go ahead. But it's also a flip from Im Enani Li, Mi Li, and then Ukshani. If it's all about me to my essence then what am i i mean you got a question of who and then what and it's spinning on the essence of being about yourself which means it's dangerous so you have to stop d embellishing yeah. who am i you know i'm rabbi david katz i'm rabbi david katz don't do that once you know okay i'm rabbi david katz i got a smicha i got a certificate right so now start asking, what am I? What is my role? Why did God, you know, give me this particular interest of life to become this thing? What is this thing? What is right. it I and, do? And, what, what do I do? And, and let's say you learn this lesson and you strip your ego from you. I mean, you, the best you can. You're maybe, maybe it's your first attempt at saying, oh, I have an ego. Let me remove that. Yeah. Then you can read it again and say, if, if that's not me, if my ego is not me, then who am I? And then... Ah, right, yeah. You and I worked on this about a year or two ago, right? And if, if who I, I am... am me, right. Yeah, if who I am is my essence, then what does that me, make me? Well, so if I'm not Rabbi, if I'm not Rabbi David... If I'm not Rabbi David Katz, I'm just David Katz. I had to use Rabbi David Katz to find David Katz. And then if I if, if that's who I really am, David Katz, what is David Katz? Yeah, what is it instead of who? Yeah. Because you, you, the ego is who. Right. By it definition, since I got rid of Rabbi Katz, I have no use for saying who is David Katz. Doesn't interest me at all. I want to know now what is, which is a nice way of saying, what is the the soul muzzle of David Katz? David Pesach ben Leiva Cohen. What is that? What's my yeah, mom's? What is, what is the God part of me with no name or right. ego? Right. 
The im lo akshav, and if not now. That's a hard one for me. If not now. Not, I mean, you explained it, but. So David Katz is a man. He's going to, he has uh, all these. Oh, so he, David it. Katz is the now part of the God program. Well, well but, if, but if, right, but, 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 but when you think of David Katz or Jason Speck, you project <clears throat> the future, right? So, but mm-hmm. the thing is, you got to bring it into now. What is David Katz now? That's where people don't want to do. Because, you know, David Katz has, you know, no, no this, no that, no this, no that. And so that, it, I don't have a resume. I don't well, have anything. Jason Speck doesn't exist except in the present. Yeah, but see, when, we, when we project, we want to say, you know, David Katz is, is, a, was a, is a successful man. No, he's not. He's a young guy struggling to, you know, get by. But, you know, but see, everywhere you are in life, you struggle. An old guy who made a lot of money, he's gonna say he still has the things he struggles on. So you're always going to project in the future where there's a where there's a, a bliss, you know, mindset. So if not now, when? So then you have to, you have to admit who you are now. And there, therefore, since you're now, when when will the, when will you change? When will you become this great person that you that you're destined to be? You know, in a way. It, it seems like he's giving us the answer, but it actually does sound like what is the meaning of life? I mean, it sounds like a question. You can see this both ways. I, I always understood this mission to be the, the answer to the meaning of life. I remember in Yeshiva years ago, I looked at this and I said, this is the meaning of life. But every time I look at the meaning of life, I find it's a circle. The question is the answer. That's right. It's a circle. I guarantee if you meditate on this one, Jason, you will, you'll have all your answers, at least the, the beginning of the path to getting those answers. A continuous, you know, run program. Because your meaning of life Maybe is going to change wherever you go. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and now changes all the time, too. So now can't be the That's it. absolute objectivity ah, the, because so there, maybe when is the answer well no that this is why and you that's struggle why it's a question this is why you struggle with the question because right now i suspect may have a meaning of life but i'm not attached to it necessarily i mean let's say hyperbolically right now i'm going to be a different jason speck tomorrow that's so it. it's wonderful it's wonderful now but when aim a tie then i'll know too, you know well, you have, the thing he's saying, you have to ask this question every single day. Yeah. You, you you complain that you have to ask this question every day. He's saying, Jason, don't complain. See it as a blessing. That every day you wake up and you get to ask, what is the meaning of life? <clears throat> you see it as a burden. Well, every day you actually burden. do the meaning of life. You are living the meaning of life. You look back. That's what Ulama Baba will be. And you'll say, oh, it was the meaning of life every day. Not that. He's saying every day your now and your future changes. So by definition, you have to answer the meaning of life differently every single day. When you wake up, it's a new life. Yesterday's gone. You grew. You advanced. So then you have to say, you wake up and you say like this, Im ain ani li. Jason says, I still don't know who I am. Me, Lee. You say, I'm asking you, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And he says, Jason, just say it. And he says, okay. Jason Specht, chiropractor. <laughs> and you say, okay, now, what am I, Jason? And then you would say, well, that's a good question. And you say, that's a really good question. Then you have to look, take a long look and, and say what you are. And then you say, Im lo akshav, and if it's not now, meaning you're, you're, he's gonna, you, you, he caught you lying, you were saying things that aren't true, because you know that you're going to try to pep yourself, I'm a Torah scholar, no, you're not. <laughs> so he says, okay, so Jason, when? When will you be that Torah scholar? And then you live the rest of your life that day trying to get there. And then you'll go to sleep, and you'll wake up and you'll do it again. So get right, you in the morning, all... in my, that that last phrase in the morning. I have to tell me if there. You can also read it if there is no right now. If there's not right now, immediately, then is there anything? So if I'm not living right now in this moment in this right. this time, 
I'm putting my whole life off. That's it. And the meaning of my life. Who am I? What am I? I'm, I'm gonna I have to figure that out right now. I'm gonna challenge you. You are to you are to because I know you very well. You are to meditate on this after you. You three things to do every morning. Ready? Okay. You're gonna wash bedside. Not in the bathroom. Wash bedside. Say modani, which is interesting. Modani. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> that's that's got to be Yeah. And then I you're gonna this, med- then you're gonna meditate on Hillel, on okay. this on this Mishnah. Mm. Every day you are to do this. This is this is the whole thing in Modani. That's it. That's that's Modani. He says, "Hey, you know how I know you're gonna have to say this Mishnah? You say, come on, I don't have to say this." He says, "Do you ever say Modani?" <laughs> yep. What you're saying is, I acknowledge <laughs> acknowledgement of self. So since you acknowledged, let's talk about that. Right, but it's way too early in the morning, <laughs> way too groggy, and I'm like, "This is this." I I say it, and I'm like, "I have no idea what I'm saying." That's it. He's saying, he says, "I know you're going to say the the halacha out of rote, right?" You know, right? He said, "Okay, good. Now that I got your attention. Let's go in there a little deeper." Usually, first... I don't say it. I don't say it out of rote. I genuinely say it out of confusion. I really do. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, he's saying now, but you have to bring in the high intellect, Mokhan the Godless. you got to really jump in there and, and do it. I need to drink some coffee before I wake up. <laughs> 293 is the Gematria. Im li, mi li. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. That doesn't do it. Hold on, let me, let me do it. Let's check. One second. 40, 50, 90, 130. 140, 90, 91, 201, 202, 252, 292, 293. Uh, no, no, nothing. Uh, who am I? What am I? And when am I? That is all kind of Hashem's name, right? What? I mean, uh, Oh yeah, it's, isn't it basically? It's like this. This is it's the letters. It's the divine letters. Aleph Yud, Lamed Mem, like Elokim, Ma Ani, Ma Ani. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's, I think it, what it, he's doing is he's. I he am. Knows, I was. I be it, it's all it, it's it's like the ant it's the mirror image of hashem's certainty of his eternity and his oneness and our lack of any of that security asking ourselves are we who we are and what does that mean and when is it i mean hashem's name basically the eternal is the is the you know why this Office. works? Well, you know why this Mishnah works? Hmm. Because he didn't really... He, it's all double talk. He didn't really say anything. Right. What he did was, with Ruach HaKodesh, divine inspiration, he used all divine lettering that it just had to work. Right? It's like... Oh, wow. Look at all the yuds. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like he, he, yeah. And... yeah, he knows... He knew how to really use divine language. Im ain't a ni li mi li. It's all. It's just you know. Im is also aim, which is mother, which is bina. Um, ain. And ain is, is like ain't ain't so. Well, it's the same letters as a ni. Same letters. That's all of your nuns. And then lamid yud is um, to all of God's letters. Yud ke vav ke. The lamid goes with all of them, and the mem goes with all of them. It's a famous thing in Rav Kaplan. Are you Kaplan? So. So he, he's using mastery of language in the main part parts. Im ain ani li mi li ma ani, and then when he says kisha ani atzmi, again it's it's an, kisha ani is just, just ani with grammar, and then atzmi. I mean that's like the essence. The, the essence of God is the same word essence. So it's it's an essential word. Ma ani v'im lo akshav. 
So Akshav and Amosai, um, I mean, Akshav is now. It's like, you know, the essence of consciousness. And Amosai, with Matai, which is all of time. So he's using, again, like I call it Greek wisdom, huge, huge uh, characters. You know, Akshav now and Amosai when are just characters. Those are not words. You see, those are not words. Those are just characters. This is, this is none of these are words. These are all characters. That's me. Essence is not a word. It's a character. You, Jason, are a character. Right? You have a function. You are a character. You are a program of God. It's not like the next one in Shammai who says keva, which means set or established. That's that's already a word. That's a concept. Hill is not speaking in concepts. He's only speaking in characters. Shakespearean. Yeah. Like the previous one, with bringing in all the foreign language. And... That's it. He's, he's bringing in poetry and character and wisdom. Which is incredible because the, the tradition is that, uh, it might not be literal, but they said it. He was illiterate till he was 40, right? <laughs> was he? That's what they say, yeah. Uh, I thought it was Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva, yes. Yeah. yeah, they said he would bite a Torah scholar on the yeah. on the arm, and 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 he he couldn't read. But the, his... Hill, 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 Hill was also he he had That's what I'm talking about. Is Hill? Yeah. I'm talk... Yeah. Well, Hill, no, Hill, I'm talking about Rabbi Kiva. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is Hill. No, but Hill, sorry, Hill, Hill also he was an ama arts also, and he um. He wanted to hear Torah. He, had, he was the, They say that nobody was ever more poor than Hillel. So if you say, you know, that you're poor and I can't learn Torah, then the question is, are you more poor than Hillel? And what he did was he wanted to hear the Torah, so he went to the base medrash at night and he, he leaned over like a window on the top, like a, some kind of like a hole in the roof. It probably made it snowed, it snowed under. Yeah, yeah it snowed under. And I think they, they they heard him up there, or he fell, or what it was, and they brought him in. And, and it was then, Shabbat. Uh, and they, was it? They, yeah. they broke Shabbat for him. Yeah. To and revive so, him. Yes, yeah, so he came in, and he became Hillel. He yeah. is, a, is a scion from the house of David. He is the union of Benjamin and Judah, which is the the secret of the seed of David. Because basically the Mashiach is a hybrid of Benjamin and David. Uh, through David's con concubines and things like that. And Rabbi Judah the priest, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, then is Hillel's descendant that furthers that tradition. So this is uh, the, really the, the essence of the Davidic line. And how do you recognize the Mashiach bin David, according to the Rambam? He has a mastery over the oral Torah. And I, I think we, we, ha we know not only from what we're told, but from our investigation here, we can see why Hillel was the master of the oral Torah. He really brought it to another level than the, the uh, other guys. And it makes sense. Now Now it really makes sense. Why was Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi the author of the Mishnah in its written form? Because he inherited from Hillel. He knew how to contain wisdom, like Greek wisdom, as a high function. Why was Hillel so poor, though? And Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi was definitely not. I don't, that's I don't that's how it all. That's how it always happens. Hila not, was so poor. No, but what, it, it, what's the wisdom always? The, the, why the, wasn't the shefa open for this man? It, like, it, it was. Beginning? It was. He got the shefa in Ruchnius. You know who was one of the most poorest guys that ever lived? Was Rabbi was Rabbi Ashlag. The translation of the Zohar. Really? He was yeah. really poor, huh? Hard, horribly poor. Do you know anybody that has more money now mm. than the than the, than the uh, Kabbalah Center? I can't hear you. Are you there? Yeah, do you hear me? Yeah, I do know. Do you know, do you know anybody that has more money than the Kabbalah Center? Mm. Yeah. That's so hard. it's always the patriarch was poor. That's usually, that's like, the, that's the cliche. You know, I came to this country with nothing and I had to work. <laughs> and then the, then the descendants are all loaded, you know? So I think Hillel didn't want money. I think he was okay with the chef of Torah. I'm sure he would have liked to have money, but uh, this was his passion, and he wasn't out making money. Was his partner, his pair, Shammai, was he poor? I don't know. I don't have it pictured in my head that he was, but what do I know? I don't know. I don't know what the story was. 
Uh, all right, so I guess we should probably stop there, and uh, we'll pick it up next time with Shemai. Uh, this was a shorter class today, but I think we understand Hillel pretty well. But we shouldn't have had two Hillels. I mean, we, we cheated. We really have had three Hillels. So we've we've built up the story over three weeks. So there's there's a reason why why we're able to pinpoint him so well. And you have to say there's a reason why he's so quoted. I think he, he's more, we're not done with him. Yeah, he's going to come back again in chapter two, mission of five, also in six. I mean, we're not done. Hillel is a major, major character in this whole story. So we'll be getting more of him. And I guess we'll close with that. So a good week to you. And I'm not going to go into Shammai's grave when we do him to <laughs> next time. Uh, but just kind of a forecast ahead. We're looking at Shammai. Rabbi Gamliel, and uh, Rabbi Shimon, his son, which is not Shimon Bar Yochai. Oh, there, Shimon... there, there is one more thing to, yeah. to say about Hillel. Yeah. This, this story about the Torah on one foot was actually yeah. a story about a gear prospect. Yeah. He came to him and said, I want to know if I can be a gear. And Hillel accepted. He said, you know, everybody knows what he said. And he summed it all up. He said, that's yeah. how you be a gear. Yeah. So he was he was definitely open to Garam and and so the halacha went by him. And Shemai, they say that the same guy had gone to Shemai first, and Shemai right. basically said, "Get out of here." Oh, uh, so that makes sense. We, we, there's no converts to the day of the Mashiach, and they say we're going to be going by the law of Shemai in the days of the Mashiach. Yeah. So why? Because that's the whole thing. Shemai would have he would have held that there were no garam. Yeah. He was he was bringing the view of the future. <laughs> Makes sense. It'll be very interesting to see what he says. All right, a good week to you and Shavuot Tov. We look forward to Shama, um, Shamai next time. Okay. All right. See you. Have a good week and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.